Right, we're taking you uh, live to um, Joint Base Andrews, where the First Lady, Melania Trump, was set to take off. She was headed to Philadelphia, but then we received word that there was a mechanical issue on her plane. That's right. You're seeing the plane in the distance there. This is uh, the tape which has just been fed to us, so we're seeing this in real time along with you. This is the holding area where the press usually gets swept by the Secret Service before heading out to the tarmac and boarding either Air Force One with President Trump or uh, with the First Lady boarding that aircraft. The pool report, this is the report from journalists who were on the plane, notes that there was a thin haze of smoke which they could see and the smell of something burning. Burning. So in this footage, you see that the press has now left uh, the plane uh, going back to the holding area. There doesn't appear to be any emergency crews on the scene at the moment, and we're still uh, uh, trying to get in contact with people there, and perhaps we'll be able to speak with a journalist in a few moments. Um, but, but for now, we're just making sure that you're aware of these reports and you see what's happening at Joint Base Andrews. Yeah, in fact, we have uh, Mark Rosenker on the phone. He's the uh, former chairman of the NTSB. Mark, you're the guy that we uh, go to all the time whenever there are issues with transportation. So uh, you heard, Errol, we have a few details here. They're calling it a mechanical issue. There was sort of uh, some smoke, enough smoke that people felt they needed to cover their face and uh, get themselves off of the plane based on that limited information and I know we're sort of asking you to speculate but what could be happening here well uh, let me also add the fact that I used to be the director of the White House military office so those aircraft would come under my office when when in fact the uh, president or the first lady were flying any of those types of aircraft with the 89th wing out at Andrews these folks are the best of the best of the best. Typically, these aircraft are about as well maintained as you can possibly maintain them. Um, these these uh, events, if they do ha uh, happen, they are very, very, very rare. And uh, this is the best trained crews you can find in the flying business. They're able to mitigate any issues and bring the aircraft down safely, as we saw. Mm -hmm. And Mark, how does something like this happen? We are now getting word that the First Lady's trip may be reevaluated. But before a First Lady or a head of state gets on this aircraft, what type of checks would it have already been through this morning? Well, they've gone through the aircraft to the maintenance teams that routinely look at these airplanes before they put them out for a mission. So a uh, crew gets aboard and obviously fires up the aircraft, does its pre-check, pre-flight check. And uh, at the point, uh, I guess, of uh, before departure, everything looked right. But again, we are dealing with mechanical things, and uh, they can break at any time. Hmm. Uh, but in this particular case, again, the crews are trained to deal with these kinds of issues, to make sure they're able to uh, mitigate any possible uh, problems, and then bring the aircraft back as they did. So obviously they're going to look very carefully at what happened to this piece of equipment and uh, to make sure they understand what happened, why it happened, and then take any measures to prevent it from happening again. And we're just seeing footage uh, from the press as they get back in the shuttle and they're taken uh, back to a place uh, where they can uh, be held, this flight being reevaluated. Who is responsible for the mechanical soundness of an aircraft before uh, the First Lady gets on board? Whose fault well, is this, Mark? It, it, it is the uh, 89th uh, Special Air Missions Wing. They are the folks that are involved in uh, operating and maintaining these aircraft to the highest of all standards. I can't think of any better uh, maintained aircraft and flown aircraft than those that are part of the uh, fleet that deal with the President of the United States, the First Lady, and uh, the senior staff of the, of, uh, of the White House. How, how alarmed should we be that this flight was apparently already in the air? I mean, this was 10 minutes into uh, the First Lady being on board and journalists kind of on their way to Philadelphia, which is, is itself a, a very short flight. Uh, what does that tell you? Well, this aircraft took off and then uh, began to uh, uh, emit some smoke coming from what they believe was a, a piece of communications gear. Uh, they were able to isolate it. Uh, they were able to uh, turn it off and thereby uh, stop the electrical issues uh, and the smoke from coming out of the, uh, the uh, there is a ventilation system that was also able to be used to get the, the smoke out of the cabin. So all of these things were being done as their training would dictate. 
So um, they would obviously want to get on the ground as quickly as possible. But being 10 minutes out of Andrews enables them to turn around very quickly and be able to make that emergency land. Hey, Mark, you mentioned just how well maintained these planes are. I'm also worrying about, worried or rather wondering about uh, security. I mean, just sort of on a regular flight, there's high security nowadays. What's security like for a plane like this? Well, they are in a special area at Andrews. These aircraft are um, uh, very, very secure. Uh, Air Force One uh, actually has its own hangar and uh, very, very highly restricted. It's like trying to get into the White House. Now, we are seeing from this pull report from journalists who are on board the flight that uh, one of the crew members said to this member of the press that it, the smoke, the haze, appeared to be coming from a, ma from a malfunctioning communications unit that overheated. What does that tell you? What could that be? Oh, obviously a lot of things, and it's very difficult to speculate. But the good news is they were able to uh, recognize where the smoke was coming from, yeah. uh, turn off the unit, isolate the unit, and thereby uh, stop the smoke from uh, continuing to uh, get worse on board the aircraft. So is this something that would be investigated the way any other uh, airline sort of mishap would be investigated? I mean, does the NTSB come in, or what, what happens moving forward? In this case, since this was just an incident, uh, the Air Force will do its own investigation. That's not to say they couldn't ask the NTSB, but this is such a minor thing right. that they have. They'll do their own investigation. They'll find out what happened and make any measures to, uh, to do exactly what's necessary to prevent it from happening again. All right, Mark Rosenker, always appreciate your insight. Thank you, sir. You bet.